So in 1900, a woman called Elizabeth McGee yeah. wanted to create a game which would make people understand just what would happen in life if a few people owned everything. And she gave it two sets of rules. The first set of rules, called the prosperity rules, when a player buys a property, all the other players get a little bit of income too. Mm -hmm. And the game is won by everybody when the player who started with the least money has doubled their income. <laughs> the second set of rules, called the monopoly rules, <laughs> when you buy a property, you charge rent to anyone who lands on it and you can use that rent to buy more properties. And so the rich get richer and the poor fall out the bottom. When Parker Brothers discovered this game in the 1930s, they released it to the world with just the monopoly set of rules. Economics is obsessed with having unending growth. The economy is doubling in size nearly every 20 years. We take Earth's materials, turn them into stuff we want, we use it for a while, and then throw it away. Yep. And that take, make, use, lose, it cuts against the living cycles of the planet, causing climate change, causing pollution. We've got to replace that with something smarter. And daft though it sounds, I think it looks like a donut. Oh, yeah. The kind with a hole in the middle. So. <laughs> In the hole in the middle of that donut is a place where people are falling short on life's essentials, be it food, housing, education, water, mm. energy. And so we want to get everybody in the world out of that hole. But we also can't go beyond the donut's outer crust because there we start to put so much pressure on this extraordinary planet causing climate breakdown, biodiversity loss, air pollution, too much land conversion. We kick out of kilter this extraordinary living planet on which all of our well-being depends. When people live in highly unequal societies, whether they are rich or poor countries, as a whole, that country will have lower levels of trust, lower life expectancy, but also democracy suffers because when people don't feel a sense of connection with their neighbours, they don't organise and demand, say, environmental protections be put in place. Getting a more equal society is actually fundamental to so many of the values we're trying to achieve. This is our 21st century challenge. We have to think about having an economy that actually can grow like everything in nature, but in nature things grow and then they mature and they come to thrive. <laughs> so GDP needs to become a responsive servant of the economy, not the master that drives us. And if we put that regenerative idea and distributive idea at the heart of the 21st century economy, we'll be on track.